What's going on, B Stab Fishing Nation? What's happening? Good to see you guys. Uh, my name is Bob Stavold. For those of you just tuning in, I'm up here in southern New Jersey. So if you're north of me, then I'm down here in southern New Jersey. Uh, I fish primarily out of uh, Atlantic and Cape May County. Primarily out of Cape May County once uh, once flounder season starts. So, oh, we might as well just jump right in. Flounder season. Let's talk about going out and fishing for flounder preseason. I know that sparked a little bit of controversy, especially on... Um, couple uh, social media groups, you know, where I post my videos and links to videos and hope, you know, to, to entertain folks and to even, you know, build my viewing, uh, my viewing numbers, um, subscribers and whatnot. Um, that's, that's the whole name of the game here, you know, build, build the algorithm, right? So long and short, uh, some people questioned the legality of going out and fishing for flounder prior to the opening of the season. And I'll be honest with you, because if I was lying, you'd know it, there uh, is always going to be people that have, you know, have to chime in. Sometimes they're right as right can be, and sometimes they really are speaking out of their ear. Um, and unfortunately, I think this time there were some people that were making comments, posting comments, and we all know we talked about trolls before, and like some people just get on there and just have to post comments um, in, you know, always, always with a negative flavor and not knowing what they're talking about. So this was one of those times. So one thing somebody said, and I'm going to have to use my glasses, although I'm actually pretty good on my phone, but I am going to have to look down at my phone and I apologize. One thing somebody said was, you're not allowed to target flounder preseason. And I, I see where the confusion's coming in because, listen, I was a cop for 25 years. One thing I think I was good at was reading the law, interpreting case law, interpreting what laws meant, and making sure I didn't break them. I mean, and, and knowing if somebody did. So, personally now, at this stage of the game, especially making videos, you have absolute documentation of, of uh, what I'm out there doing. I'm not going to break a law. You know, I'm sure as heck purposely not going to break a law, but I don't want to break one accidentally either. I didn't before. I don't plan on doing it now, even though I'm, I'm you know, a regular civilian again. But one thing that was brought up was uh, somebody, and, I'll, and they quoted, it's funny, they did a cut and paste, cut and paste right out of the uh, Marine Digest. And I'm going to, I apologize again, I'm going to have to read it, read it here. But you can find this, if I'm not mistaken, right around page 19 of the 2020 Digest. And I will, will specifically cite page 19 on something else I have to say. So, no person shall take, catch, kill, or attempt to take, catch, or kill any fish within the marine waters of the state by any means. And this is where I think their brain stopped. You can't attempt to take them out of season. It says nothing about that. Right? It says nothing about that. Let's read it again. No person shall take, catch, kill, or attempt to take, catch, or kill any fish within the marine waters of the state by any means except, except in the manner commonly known as angling with hand line or rod and line unless specifically provided for by statute or regulation. So what does that mean? What does that mean? That doesn't mean you can't target fish preseason, flounder specifically, because, well, listen, we're talking about flounder, okay, or sea bass, or, or uh, tog. That doesn't mean you can't, you can't target them preseason, you can't go out and fish for them preseason. All this is telling you is the method, you're on, the method you're allowed to use to catch them. In other words, you can't go out there with some crazy cockamamie setup to snag and and harvest fish. No, you have to use them and, you know, catch them by either hand line or rod and reel is what they're saying for the recreational guys. Has nothing to do with targeting. This is where I think somebody, uh, some people got, got highly confused regarding the verbiage of targeting. Nowhere regarding flounder is the word targeting used. 
However, striper season it is. So striped bass, and this is absolutely page 19 of the New Jersey Digest, okay? If you wish to, here it is. I just printed it out. I got the online version that uh, the fishing game sends me every year. So this is at page 19. And again, I apologize. I'm going to read it word for word. Striped bass closed seasons. This is regarding closed seasons for striped bass, which are federally regulated, right? Flounder is regulated by our state. Stripers regulated federally, right? No person may take, attempt to take, okay, or have in possession any striped bass from the following closed waters. So attempt to take. Yeah, you can't go out and and now that's essentially targeting. You can't attempt to take stripers in closed waters, okay? And I'll just read one of them. January 1st through February 28th, all waters closed except the Atlantic Ocean from zero to three miles offshore. All inlets and bays are delineated from ocean waters by Colreg's uh, demarcation line. See what they're saying here? You can't attempt to take a striper during a specific closed season in these specific closed waters. There's nothing about saying you can't attempt to take a flounder or a sea bass. I haven't really looked at sea bass, so I don't want to misquote, but a flounder. The flounder is, is the hot topic right now. There's nothing that says you can't attempt to take a flounder uh, during closed season, okay? Just so, let's put that to rest, shall we, for the love of God and all humanity? While we're at it, so... Uh, let's move into, well, while we're at one flounder, let's just, let's just go one step further with flounder. Flounder belly. We all know the white side flounder belly is probably some of the best bait for flounder out there, right? Um, I've used it in the past. I'm not going to say that I haven't salted it. And taking it out, you know, saved my, saved my, uh, actually I've saved my skin, you know, um, the flounder belly skin, salted it, made it like shoe leather and then used that in the past. I'm not sure how long ago I did that, but it's been done. And guess what? That folks is a no, no. Okay. Illegal. So. If you are going to use flounder belly, you are allowed to fillet while you're out on the water one flounder, one legal flounder. That flounder is part of your three limit catch. Your two fish in the slot, 17 to 17.99 inches, and then your 18 or above. You are allowed to fillet one of those flounder on that day that you're fishing. You cannot have flounder from a previous trip, flounder pieces, the ribbons, the belly, you can't have flounder from a previous trip on your boat. It's illegal, okay, on, on, a, on another day, on a future day. So, anglers, and I, again, I apologize, my head might be down, my eyes are down. Anglers may fillet one legal-sized summer flounder from their daily possession limit catch for use as bait. This carcass, commonly known as the rack, we all seen some flounder, got a nice rack, shall be kept intact so it may be measured for compliance with the minimum size limit. In other words, if you're going to fillet a flounder, you get a seven, you know, the days of the sacrificial lamb flounder, oh, here's a 14 incher, let's, you know, there's guys that do it, it's unscrupulous, okay, um, and highly illegal. And it, it doesn't do us any good as, as recreational guys. But if you are going to fillet a flounder and use the flounder belly for bait, you have to keep that rack. You have to keep the carcass. You can't quick fillet it, throw the carcass overboard. If fishing game, Coast Guard, somebody comes out there, local police, they board your boat and they find you with that, that flounder belly that you're on your boat in your possession and you don't have that day's rack that it came from, not a previous rack, but that day's rack that it came from, you're going to get popped. Okay, so buyer beware. Uh, this carcass, commonly known as the rack, shall be kept intact so it can be measured for compliance with the minimum size limit. Anglers shall not be in possession of any parts of any summer flounder caught on a previous fishing trip. Only fish caught 
on the current day, okay? Current outing. So that's that. Page 19. Page 19, okay? All right, we're back. Culling, culling flounder. Oh my God, did this man bring out the, uh, I don't even know, the legal pundits, uh, pundits, 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 whatever, the legal ding dongs, I'm gonna call them, because people that were, again, talking out the side of your head. Listen, I'm not going to put myself in harm's way, in jeopardy's way. I am not going to embarrass myself and a fish and wildlife officer who I will invite any day, any day, any officer, any Coast Guard official, any uh, fish and wildlife officer on my boat. You want to come up, sir, can I come on your boat? You, uh, Captain, you tell me what you want to do. My boat is yours to, to, to go over. Plain and simple. I'm a retired cop. I'm not going to embarrass myself by doing something wrong. And I'm not going to embarrass and put a law enforcement officer of, of any, of any, uh, from any venue, department, in an embarrassing situation and in a really tough situation where they're going to now have to write a retired cop a ticket. That's a horrible spot to be in. I mean, it's just part of our profession. So I'm not doing it. That being said, calling, I reached out to the Fish and Game uh, Marine Division. I called Southern Division first. Uh, they said, you know, they're they're dealing more with uh, hunting. So they referred me to the Marine Division. I called Marine Division. I got a call back from an officer who actually was a buddy of mine. Called me back the very next day. Uh, wonderful guy. These are wonderful people. They are keeping us safe out there. You know, don't forget that as well. And they're keeping keeping what we love, the fishing that we love, the, the recreation that we love to do. They're keeping things regulated so we don't lose. You know, we don't lose the flounder. We don't lose uh, the ability to go out there and do the things we love. Call me back. Great guy says, you know, I ran the situation, a scenario by him about culling flounder. Flat out says, Bob, I see nothing wrong with you releasing a perfectly healthy flounder that say is 19 inches because you just now caught a 23 inch flounder and you want to keep the 23 inch flounder. I went so far as to explain to him you know, listen, putting flounder in a five-gallon bucket and think it's going to stay alive and you're going to release a good fish, they're pretty hardy, but eventually you're going to have to keep changing that water. And if that's what you're going to do, great. Keep putting fresh water in that bucket. As long as you're circulating fresh water, you're going to keep that flounder alive. I have a live well. Most boats have a live well, most big boats. I know some guys that will literally put in a battery-operated uh, bubbler in a bucket of water, in a five-gallon bucket of water to keep fish alive. A lot of guys do that for their minnows and, and whatnot. So I have, a, I have a live well on my boat, an aerator. Uh, it's constantly feeding fresh salt water or whatever water I'm into, raw water into the fish. And guys, the other day, I, I uh, opening day, I stuck three flounder, right? Bled them out. Bled out three flounder. Thought I bled them out pretty good. Figure if you bleed out, you're going to die. When I finally took them out of the live well, because I figured let them bleed in there, you know, and I could just let that water drain. I, they were still alive. So if they were still alive and kicking and could have swam off, what is a flounder that I didn't bleed out going to do when I keep feeding them fresh water? It's going to be perfectly healthy. It's like you're fishing your aquarium. There's no difference, right? There's no difference. So long and short, he said, you're perfectly fine. You can get that 19 inch flounder that is perfectly healthy. Release them. If he's live, he's healthy, release him, keep your 23-inch flounder. Now, you do want to be careful with this one particular portion of the law. It's called wanton waste prohibited. Wanton waste prohibited. Long and short, you are not allowed, it is illegal, no matter what the species of fish, whether it is a regulated fish or not, you're not allowed to beat that fish up. You're not allowed to do harm to that fish. You're not allowed to kill that fish and throw it back in the water. Illegal. The guys that bend, you know, get sand sharks, dog sharks, and bend their nose, break their nose, you're not allowed to do that. You're causing harm to the, to the fish. You're not allowed to do that, okay? You're not allowed to mutilate a fish. You get a fish a skate, beat it to death, and throw it back in the water. Even though it's not a regulated fish, you're not allowed to do that. It's called... 
uh, wanton, what did I, what did I go? wanton waste prohibited. Okay, just so everybody's good, good there. Uh, da -da -da. All right, so we're good. I don't need my phone anymore to look down at that. Calling, you are allowed to call. If you're going to do it, I'm just going to give you my tips on how I'm going to call fish on my uh, on my boat and um, the steps I'm taking to make sure I'm doing it right. So some of you watch my videos, you see I catch a fish. Now I'm going to bleed that fish out. I now have to reach into my live well, screw in the the plug. Okay, it's the tall the tall plug. So it plugs into the bottom, screws into the bottom of my live well, and then it has the vent at the top, so the overflow can go out down the drain. And I'm able to uh, fill my, my live well up to the top. That being said, um, every time I want to grab one of my fish that I bled and now put it on ice, especially in the hot summer days, I have to reach in, you know, if I'm wearing long sleeves, which I normally do, pull my sleeve up, get in there in that bloody water and unscrew the, uh, unscrew the plug. Now, and to make life even easier, especially when I'm calling, calling fish, um, I bought these tags, right? So these floats. So let's see here. Long and short, we don't need that anymore. Guys, so did I drop any? No. I bought these. There should be five. I bought these off uh, six. I bought these off of Amazon. Hi, buddy. What's up, Smokes? I bought these off of Amazon. You've seen these in the professional bass tournaments. Small mouth, large mouth. Okay. Hopefully you guys can see this. It's got a float. Let me put some of these down. It's got a float and a ring at the uh, top, so you can grab it, grab that float at the bottom. Easy little clip. And I'll tell you, um, I'll put a picture up of the ones that I actually bought on Amazon. They were the cheapest I found. They were in great shape. People are like, oh, well, that clip, you're, you're causing harm to the fish. No, you're not. I didn't want to get anything that went in through the gills and held them in the gills. I just don't want that. I didn't want, and, you know, if you're not going to go through the gills, you have to stay, stay away from the gills, okay? I, I didn't, you know, you could have, you know, put it through the skin of the lip of the fish. I'm not going to do that. Um, this here literally hooks to the fish's lip. So I'm assuming this isn't going to hurt. Might as well try it. Oh, oh the agony. Oh. Guys, it's really not that bad. Now in the event, I need, I'm down there swimming around. That fish is swimming. He's in the bottom. I'm like, oh. I got a 23-incher. I'm getting rid of this 19-er. I'm pulling this thing up. Guys, this honestly uh, uh, doesn't hurt. does not hurt. Okay? Stupid, but I'm just trying to prove a point. I'm not harming the fish. Now, I don't have to keep unscrewing the water, unscrewing the, uh, the plug. Oh, real quick and easy. Quick and easy. Pull that fish up, out, unclip him. He goes in the water. This clip goes on the new fish, the bigger fish. That fish goes in the live well. And to be honest with you, to make my life even easier, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use these on the fish, my uh, 17 and a half, 17 to 17.99 slot fish that I'm using, that I'm that I'm bleeding out. I'm not going to try and call, oh, I got a 17. Let me see if I can get a 17 and a half. If I get a 17, a slot fish, it's going to get bled out. You know, it's going to get bled out. Um, or, I don't know, maybe I will call them. At this point in time, why not? If I can do it successfully, and if I catch a 17 and a half, I'll throw the 17 back in. I'm not looking to come in each day and say, I got my limit. I got my limit. I'm a limiter. I'm the limit. Guys, I'll catch 16 and a half inch fish all day long. And I know we all want to catch big fish. Believe me, I'm out there. I want to catch a big flounder. I'll give you bragging rights, right? But I just like to catch fish, okay? I'm not out there hunting down some, some, you know, flukezilla. Am I absolutely trying to? Yes. Is my day going to be ruined if I don't catch a, a monster flounder? No. I'm just, I'm catching. I'm having fun. I'm out on the water. I'm doing something other than, you know, sitting home and whatever, making videos. So that's where we're at. It is legal to fish preseason. Unless you're dealing with flounder, or flounder, unless you're dealing with striper, targeting them in closed waters. That's a problem. Flounder, not a problem. Release them. Release them quickly. Leave them in the water as long as you possibly can. In fact, I've even read in uh, some state game literature, 
try to leave the flounder in the water. I, I did this on one of my videos last year. Leave them in the water and see if they can shake themselves free so you're not even taking them out of the water and holding them and handling them. If you're going to hold them and handle them, okay, don't go up under the gills and grab Stay away from gills, okay? Hold them. Don't use a rag. Don't use a towel unless you soak it in the water that they're in, salt water. And even then, you're still going to wipe off their slime. But don't ever grab a fish that you don't intend to keep with a dry towel. You just wiped its protective slime right off of its body. Okay, and that's, that's a no-no. I'm going to do everything I can to release a fish as quickly as possible, as ethically as possible, and as alive and healthy as possible. I will say I am guilty, and we all are, of pulling that fish in, you know, trying to get it out, and next thing you know, it's flopping on the deck. Minimize that. Minimize that on fish that you're going to release. That is something I am absolutely beast of fishing nation. I am going to work on, okay, the best I can on fish that I intend to release, on fish that, you know, are, are, are too small. Nine times out of ten, you'll see I pick them up. I, I just grab them by the, the leader, grab them by the leader, grab the fish, unhook them and go. If I can't get the, the hook out easily, I'll either grab my pliers or I'll grab my uh, hook remover, shake them off real fast. Quick shake up and down, pops that hook backwards, brings them up, hook's going backwards. They're out, they're gone. Next thing you know, they're in the water, swimming away, giving you the fin. Right? Okay, guys. I hope I put to bed and put to rest some of the misnomers and the misinformation that was out there regarding culling and regarding catching flounder out of season, okay, preseason. Um, New Jersey's regs, May 2nd to, I don't remember, September 27th. I'm not 100% sure. Don't misquote me, you know, don't quote me on that. But definitely, obviously, it opened up this Monday, May 2nd. 18 inch or above, you're allowed one, go out, I'll put the picture up, buy these, buy these calling tags, these things are phenomenal, um, go out, do your thing, you're allowed two fish, slot fish, 17 inches to 17.99 inches, I will tell you this, make sure you've got good rulers on board, very easy to get yourself jammed up, um, I have that Marine Tech, uh, Marine Tech rule, uh, ruler on the floor, and uh, you can bet your bippy that I've I've measured that to make sure I was in good shape. And if I got something I think is questionable, I'm pulling out a tape, plain and simple. Um, other than that, guys, it's flounder season in New Jersey. Although right now we're looking at 50 mile, 40 to 50 mile an hour winds out of the northeast, starting tonight. Saturday, then tomorrow, Saturday, Sunday into Monday with 20 to 20, 20 to 30 mile an hour sustained winds and rain. It's going to be a, it's a rough weekend. I don't think it's going to be fishable until past uh, next, next Wednesday. So I pulled the uh, off course out of the water because the area that I'm in, high winds out of the Northeast are, uh, they can be a boat killer. So I'm not looking to, uh, I'm not looking to get that call, that emerging call that I got to run, you know wherever I am, stop what I'm doing and, and run out of here, go grab my trailer and try to salvage my boat. So my boat's up on dry land down at my buddy's house. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to be fishing anyway. I'm not going to be going anywhere near the boat for the next couple of days. So I took it out of the water. Um, questions, comments, concerns down below, guys. Leave me a comment. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up, click like. If you're not a subscriber, Please subscribe. Love to have you as part of our team. Be Staff Fishing Nation. If you're watching this on your television, and I do this all day long, unfortunately, we can't hit the like button. We can't subscribe while we're doing that. Do me a favor. This is what I do. If I watch a Skinner video, Elias V, Fishaholic, uh, all those guys, I will then go, if I'm watching on my, my television, I go on my phone, I look at my history, and uh, I at least give those guys a like, you know, a thumbs up, as uh, they're hardworking, and uh, I love, man, if it wasn't for all those guys, Reaper, Reaper Fishing, love that guy, <laughs> great guy, local dude, um, if it wasn't for those guys, you know, that I mentioned, and others, South Jersey, or South Florida Fishing Channel, man, I, uh, I probably, 
I probably would have uh, need some uh, need some psychological intervention this winter because I I was so bored. So, all right, guys. I hope everybody's well. I hope you have a very safe, first and foremost, safe, and then a successful 2022 flounder and fishing season, boating season. Uh, better days, weather days are coming. So let's weather these storms together. God bless you. God bless America. Go fishing.